Hey everyone, my name is Rahul, and today we're going to be going over part two of my three-part guide to Breadth First Search, or BFS. In part one, we talked about what BFS is and went over some examples. So if you missed that, make sure you click up right here in the type right-hand corner where we have that video linked. Make sure you watch that, then come right back to part two where today we're going to be talking about how you code BFS in Java. In part three, which comes out next week, we're going to talk about some interview tips for BFS. So if you end up liking this video, please leave a like and share it with a friend. These are free and easy ways to help out my channel. And also consider subscribing for part three and more content that's just like this. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first thing we wanna do is create a representation of our graph. Without a graph, we can't run BFS. So we need to define what our vertices and edges are going to look like. To do this, we're going to go ahead and define a class node, which is going to be the representation of a vertex. Each of these vertices is going to have a value. We're going to type that as an integer. This can be anything, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to choose the integer data type, as well as a list of nodes, which are going to be its children. These are going to be the nodes adjacent to this node, meaning that there is an edge between this node and any of these children that's in this list. Now that we have the vertex and edge definition out of the way and that we can construct a graph, we can now run BFS. So let's go straight into the implementation of that. Let's start out with our method signature. We're going to return a Boolean, which is going to be true if there's a path from our starting node, node start, and a node with the value end. If there is no path from the starting node to a node with the value end, we're going to return false. Okay, then let's jump into the implementation. First, we're going to define a hash set. This is going to be keeping track of our visited nodes to make sure we don't come back and revisit them. Hash sets are great because they have O of one lookup as well as O of one insertion time. So these are a great structure to keep track of our visited nodes. Then we're going to have a queue. This is going to keep track of the next nodes that we need to visit. In other words, the nodes adjacent to the one that we're currently looking at. We're going to use a queue because it makes sure that we visit first the nodes that are closest to the starting node, and then we slowly go one distance away from the starting node in each step. And to start off, the first thing we're going to do is add our starting node to that adjacency queue. And then we're going to go ahead and loop through it. Our main loop condition is going to check while that adjacency queue is not empty. This will terminate when we visited all the vertices that we can visit from the starting node. We're going to go ahead and first remove the first node from our queue, which is going to be the next one that we need to visit. We're going to ask, is that value of that node the same as the ending value that we're looking for? If it is, we return true because we found a path from that starting node to a node with the end value. If that doesn't work, then we're going to loop through the current node's children. We're going to fetch each one individually and check if it's contained within our list of visited nodes. So to make sure we don't visit it again. If it's not, we're going to go ahead and add it to our adjacency list. It's going to go all the way at the end because we have a queue structure. And then what we're going to do after looping through all of these is add the current node to our visited hash set to make sure we never return to it. Once we continue looping through this logic, we will start off by visiting the starting node. Then we will visit the nodes that are one distance away from the starting node, then two distance away, then three, and so on until either we're out of nodes that can be visited from the starting node, or we found a path from the starting node to a node with the value end. But if we fail to do this, we're going to go ahead and return false. If we come to the end of this, that means that we were unable to find a path from the starting node to any node with the value end. And that is how you code BFS in Java. If you enjoyed this video, consider sharing it with a friend and leaving a like down below. These are free and easy ways to support my channel. Consider subscribing for more content like this, as well as part three, where we're going to be going over some interview tips for BFS. Anyways, until next time, see ya.